Hi guys, this is Jesse from Novaquark. Welcome to this new Dual Universe Pre-Alpha gameplay tutorial. This time we're going to talk about Lua programming. Uh, so right away, let me tell you that you don't need to do Lua programming to enjoy the game. Uh, it's completely optional, but it's a really cool feature. And I want to show you today a bit more about how it's working, the basic principles and what you can do with it. So I have prepared a little workshop here to illustrate the, the basic concepts. Uh, and what we're going to start with is to control uh, this light with this button. So one way of doing this, as we have seen in previous uh, uh, video already, is to actually use a link. So I can connect this button to this uh, light. And when I press the button, the light goes on and off. So this is the natural and um, the, the most uh, uh, standard way of doing the, this. But for the sake of demonstration, and because it's a good and simple example, we're going to use uh, Lua programming to do exactly the same thing. So let's have a look. OK, so let me start by first deploying a programming board. A programming board is one particular type of control unit. Uh, other examples are the cockpit or commander seats. And control units are the type of elements that are able to store and run Lua code. So this is the simplest one, the programming board, and we're going to use it here. Uh, once you've deployed it, you need to connect it to the different elements that you want to actually script. So you do this with the, uh, the linker. As I do it, I connect the button. And here I'm going to connect the programming board to the light. Uh, you can see in the little window that appears uh, that we are actually connecting slot number two from the programming board to the light. Uh, so once you have deployed the link, you can actually check that later by overing the link. And you see uh, on the left part that the programming board slot two is used. And here the, this link originates from slot one. This is going to be useful in a second, so keep that in mind. Uh, let me just give a, a little bit of background on the links themselves uh, so that you better understand that, that uh, notion. Uh, here you have a green link, which means that it is a control link, a type of link that means that you are going to send sort of Lua information through it. Uh, just before we saw another type of link, which I'm going to redo here so that you can see it, which appears in blue. And this is a link that is transmitting signal. So it's a signal type of link. Uh, signal are you know, basically one or zero that, that are conveyed between the elements directly. So they are of a, of a different nature uh, compared to control links. And so they have different colors so you can uh, differentiate them. Uh, so let's take the signal link out because we will connect those two guys uh, through Lua directly. So once you've connected them, uh, you're ready to actually open the Lua editor window. So let me step out of uh, build mode first. And now as you look at this programming board, you can right click on it. And action for this element includes edit Lua script. So let's just do this. Uh, this window appears, uh, so it's a bit scary maybe, but uh, we're going to get through it and it's actually pretty simple once you, you, you get how it works. Uh, the first part of this window is this uh, left column here, where all the slots uh, actually are listed, all the available uh, slots on your programming board. And you can see that slot 1 and 2 here are editable, you can actually select them, whereas those ones are not editable because they are not currently used. Uh, we're going to get back on, back on these uh, a bit later. So you can see that those two slots are here. First thing we're going to do is that we are going to rename those guys, uh, like, for example, calling it button here. And here is the light. Uh, we can actually interact with the elements that are plugged into these slots using the names of the slots. So it's a good idea to give them uh, meaningful names instead of simply slot one or slot two. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it's a good practice. Once you've done that, you can select the button here and we are going to actually catch events that are emitted by these particular elements using the second column here, which is the filter col column. Uh, so let's just add a filter. You will see how it works. So I'm adding a filter here and here I can select for this filter different events that are actually bound to the particular elements that is plugged here, in this, this case, the button. So you see that uh, you have start, stop. This is true for every uh, slot. They will be called when the Lua script is initiated or 
uh, stopped so it's uh, called only once at the beginning and at the end and here you have two other uh, uh, events that are interesting pressed and released uh, these events are specific to the button element and actually every type of element is coming with its set of predefined events that it is uh, 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 exhibiting for you to use so let's select for example the pressed event uh, this is an event that is very simple, it doesn't have any uh, parameter, so uh, it simply is going to be triggered whenever I press the button. And the third part of the editor window is uh, the right pane here, where you can click in and enter a Lua code that is going to be executed when that particular event from that particular slot is actually occurring. So here you could have anything you want, like x equal 1 or any code you want. So instead of that, we're going to do something which is to call a particular uh, action on the light uh, uh, slot. So we talk to the light slot by writing his name, then there's a dot, and then we can type the name of an action. One action that is available for a light is activate. So uh, it doesn't have any argument as well. So you just do this uh, open and close parentheses. And that means, uh, okay, call the, the action activate with no parameter on the slot that is called light. It happens to be hosting a light unit. So that will actually activate the light. So that's, that's very, very simple. You could have a much more complicated Lua code here, anything you want. And if you want to sort of talk to a particular element, you're going to do it through the slot, by the name of the slot, and through a particular action that is listed in the set of available actions for that particular element. We're going to get back to that in a second. Let's add now another uh, filter for the button here. Uh, it's going to be uh, here, the event uh, released. So this, as you guess, is emitted when I release the button uh, pressure. And the Lua code I'm going to run in that particular case is simply light.deactivate. That means just switch off the light, basically. And that's it. So I've done a very simple Lua programming where whenever there is a particular event on the button uh, uh, slot here, which is in fact the button uh, the element we've plugged, uh, whenever a particular event uh, among those two is actually uh, emitted, then you have the corresponding Lua code that is executed. You see, as I click on the filter, then the Lua code here changes to reflect the particular code uh, that is uh, associated to that filter. And if I select here the light, you will see that the filters are gone because it's showing the filters that are associated to that particular slot. And we didn't put any filter for light. So clicking back on button, you get your two filters again and you can customize it, uh, customize them the way you want. So let's just press apply and this is set. Now it's working. But if I press the button, nothing happens at this stage. Uh, what I need to do now is to activate the programming board, which is simply done by pressing F on it. And you see on the right part of the screen, there is active programming board uh, 11. And uh, that tells me that this board is now active. And because it is active, when I press the button, the light goes on. So we have actually uh, implemented this very simple uh, connection between the events emitted by this button and the actions that this light is capable of uh, running. So let me switch the programming board off by pressing F again. So you see that the marker on the right has, is gone. Uh, and now, of course, if I press the button, nothing happens anymore. So that's the very, very basics that you need to understand about scripting Lua. So you can actually uh, script a, almost any kind of elements uh, in that way. And to help you figure out what is available for every particular type of element, uh, you can press F1 and go into the scripting uh, Lua section here, where you have an introduction, a bit of description about the, the core concept uh, that we are actually talking about right now. And here you have, more importantly, the element API section here, which is listing for every particular type of element what is available uh, in terms of scripting. So for example, if we go to the manual button that we just used, it's going to tell you that there is a pressed event, a released event, or any type of event that would actually be available for that particular element will be listed here. 
if we go to the light unit we just used as well you have the list of uh, all the actions that you can use with this uh, element so we used activate deactivate but there's also toggle get state is actually returning a value so you can use the return of this uh, function to uh, use in your Lua script and do whatever you want with the current state of the light. Um, so this, this is one example, you have many others, we will uh, spend a bit of time later on the screen unit, uh, but there's also for example telemeter that gives you the distance, uh, so uh, door unit uh, that you can activate, deactivate as well, and all sorts of things. So uh, you can spend a bit of time looking into this to see what is the, the type of functions that are available at the moment uh, in uh, Lua scripting for every single type of element that we have uh, uh, available in the game at the moment. So I'm going to press F1 again here, get back into the game, and let's now uh, look at something a little bit more uh, interesting than just uh, connecting a button to a light, see what we can do with Lua scripting. So as you probably noticed, there's a screen unit over there, uh, which can display, uh, as you know, any type of uh, text or HTML content. and well, the normal standard way of uh, changing the content is to right click on the screen and go into this menu so you can actually set the text or the HTML content or even the SVG content. So that will set a static content, but actually, as you can guess, uh, you can also script this screen with Lua. And this is really cool because it means that uh, you're able to create some dynamic content that will evolve uh, as your Lua code is running. So let's have a look at how to do this. Uh, let's get back into build mode and we're going to link the programming board to the screen. It's going to get into slot number three. And now that it is linked, let's go inside the uh, Lua editor. Uh, as you can see here, we have a slot number three made available. Uh, we're going to rename this into screen. Here it is. And uh, what we want to do in this uh, little example is to set the content of the screen when we start the programming board and to, to something and then set the content of the screen to something else when we stop the programming board. So to do this, we will catch actually the start and stop events. Uh, let me introduce you to one of those uh, mysterious uh, slots over there. Uh, the first one is unit. Uh, we're going to use this one uh, because the unit slot uh, is actually the slot that contains the control unit itself. So maybe think about it as a you know self-plugged uh, uh, slot where the control unit is always available uh, through it. And so this is a standard slot. You get it everywhere. You cannot modify its name, and it allows you to talk to the pouring board uh, directly itself or the cockpit or any control unit. So okay, let's use this guy and let's add a filter when the event start occurs so it means when i start the control unit this event is going to be activated and here let's uh, use uh, uh, the screen that we just plugged and call the set centered text uh, action and we say for example hello uh, so that will actually uh, call this action on the screen uh, when we start and let's add another filter when we stop here we go and screen set centered text bye bye so here we're good uh, we can apply that and see how it works exiting build mode i'm going to step a bit uh, away so we can see both let me start uh, the programming board here it says hello and you can see on the right that the active programming board uh, marker is is there and i'm going to stop it and now it says bye bye so a very, very simple example to show you how you can script the content of uh, your screen. Well, that's not all. You can do a lot more things uh, with the screen. For example, if you press F1 and you look at the details relative to the screen unit, uh, which is about here, uh, you can see that you can also set text uh, with a given font size uh, at a given position expressing uh, percentage of the width and height uh, so you can set text anywhere you want you can as uh, we just did set centered the text that will actually adapt the font size and the positioning of the text so that you can actually see whatever you write here uh, so it's a convenient uh, way of setting text you can set row html uh, but you can also set html at a given position so that will uh, actually enclose this into an html element uh, and uh, most of those functions, by the way, return a particular identifier, a number, 
that you will be able to use at any given time later in your script to uh, modify this content for example to move it uh, to another position uh, you have set SVG here uh, reset content so here you give the idea of um, the number that is actually returned by set content or uh, a set uh, sorry set uh, set text uh, so you can use this idea to actually reset the content to another uh, value you can delete it uh, you can show or hide it uh, you can move it around etc so there's a, there's a lot of uh, functions that are available and at the end of the day if you really want to control exactly what is on the screen you will typically use set row HTML so that you can set whatever you want uh, that is uh, uh, you know valid HTML code uh, for your screen so really really cool and uh, that actually allows you to make uh, anything like games or uh, interactive displays about your ship status or anything you want uh, just by uh, programming uh, that that uh, that screen so let's get back to the Lua editing window and let's have a look at uh, the slots I didn't explain yet this system slot in particular is very important you can forget about the library at this stage it's very advanced and you won't need it in most of the cases but system is important because uh, this slot uh, which is uh, in a sense a sort of a virtual slot it doesn't connect to anything real but it's always there and it gives you access to system events which are very important because this uh, is how you can catch for example key pressed or a timer expiring or the update of the the engine that means um, the thing that is emitted every time there is a new image for every frame so every time you want to loop something for example you will typically use this uh, these kind of events so let's have a look at uh, a particular event that is catching uh, some key pressed so the events uh, that we're going to use is action start we don't directly uh, map uh, particular keys but we instead map actions uh, which are themselves mapped to particular keys uh, so action start is the first event that actually has uh, an argument a particular parameter so we're going to set this parameter and here you see the types of actions that we've made available like forward backward so forward is uh, bound to usually to do w key uh, backward is bound to s etc etc so you will be able to remap those things uh, if you want and uh, let's say for example we use uh, the gear uh, uh, action which is typically bound to uh, uh, G. So uh, whenever I press the G key, then the gear action is going to be emitted. And so I'm going to catch the event action start on uh, this particular uh, value. So let's do this. Uh, I mean, let's set something on the screen. Uh, set centered uh, text. And uh, G is pressed. Uh, and let's say for example when I release uh, G I want to do something so it's action stop bounded to G and let's say I want to say screen uh, set centered or simply clear and that will actually clear the screen so when I press uh, G there will be a message written which is G pressed and then when I release it it's gonna clear the screen let's apply that and go big backwards and let's press F that activates uh, the control unit and say it's hello on the screen and now if I press the key uh, G it's gonna see G pressed releasing clearing the screen so again again and so it works and then I will stop the control unit and it says bye bye so this this is one very simple example of how to use um, uh, the, the system uh, slot let's have a look at other things you can do with it one very important concept is the concept of timer a timer is an event that you can control uh, you can set several timers and you can control uh, how frequently they are going to be updated like every second or every two seconds or anything you want so to set a timer we're going to use uh, a particular uh, uh, action of the system slot which is set timer uh, let's uh, set this into the start event so when the whole system starts we're going to say system set timer and then we have two uh, parameter to set the first one is a, a number that will identify your timer so you could have several timers doing different things uh, in that particular case we're going to use zero because there's only one and there's no no reason well, I could use anything I want like 42 or 10 or whatever 
And the second thing is uh, the period in seconds. So let's say, for example, 0.5 seconds. Uh, so this is going to actually create a timer named zero that will actually tick every uh, half a second. So this is we this is something that is execu executed at start. And uh, the second thing you want to do is add a filter that is going to capture the tick event for the timer zero. So the one you, you called zero. So if we had used 42, then we would write 42 here. And uh, let's say that when the timer actually ticks, uh, we're going to do a uh, light toggle, for example. So we can visually see what, what happens. So this is going to switch on and off the light uh, every half second. So let's apply that and let's uh, activate the control unit. And you can see on the left, uh, the light is blinking. So this, this is an example of this uh, timer concept that is extremely uh, useful and extremely important. It is important because um, the way you're going to use Lua is uh, based on events. So if you don't, you don't want to put an infinite loop, for example, in your Lua code, because then there will be no time left for the rest of the, uh, the game to actually run. Uh, if you do that, you will have an error uh, that will tell you that you're using too much CPU. So the proper way of doing anything that has to be done uh, on a regular basis is to actually uh, do it with a timer. Or uh, in a more extreme case, you could also add uh, a, a filter to catch the event uh, update, which is actually called at every frame. So be careful what you put here because uh, it's going to be executed uh, between 30 and 60 times per second, per yeah, per second. <laughs> so that's a lot. Uh, so that's the usual way uh, of doing things is that you want to put uh, you want to put a timer and catch it uh, with a, a reasonable frequency that corresponds to the problem you're trying to solve. So now let's let's have a look at another cool feature uh, that uh, is available with a programming board. A programming board, just like any control unit, uh, can be activated with uh, signals. So let's say uh, we're going to use here a, a presence detector, so a detection zone. So you know this this uh, this particular um, uh, element is triggering a signal whenever you're entering the volume that is uh, visible here with this this little. Uh, uh, effect and so we're going to put one of those guys here so that creates we're going to activate the, the zone visibility so we can see it so uh, it means that when I enter the zone this particular element is emitting a signal and uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to connect with the linker we're going to connect this particular detector to the control unit what that means is that when I'm entering this particular zone the control unit will activate itself so uh, that means that, for example, the light is going to start blinking and all the things we have set up will start to be uh, functional. And when I step out of the zone, then the control unit uh, is uh, turned off. So you see bye bye. Stepping in, hello, blinking and stepping out, bye bye. So this is this is very interesting so that you can actually start some complicated uh, script whenever somebody is approaching a certain area and the possibilities are, are very exciting. Uh, on, on doing this. For example, you can display welcoming informations. This is how many of the tutorials that uh, you're using in pre-alpha are made. And so it's, a, it's an important feature. Well, to conclude, let me tell you about uh, a, a very cool feature that we have implemented uh, to actually allow you to share uh, your particular Lua uh, programming uh, between each other. So it's, it's very simple. You just right click on the particular uh, control unit where you have put your Lua code and you can do copy Lua configuration to clipboard. If you do that, uh, then you will have the whole configuration copied into the clipboard, which you can then paste into a forum or an email or anything. Uh, so don't, don't worry about what is in this uh, string. It's uh, an encoding that contains all the, the setup for your programming board. And the cool thing is that whoever receives this string can actually copy it to its clipboard and do uh, the opposite action, paste Lua configuration from clipboard. And that will actually set exactly the same configuration on this programming board. So that's a way to share your programming with your friends. Um, of course, you need also to uh, indicate what kind of wiring people need to do. So they need to connect the different elements uh, so that uh, the Lua script can operate on the different elements. Uh, but apart from that, uh, everything else will be copied. And so it's a very, very simple way to exchange uh, your creation. 
in the game in the, in the future game when things are going to be uh, implemented you will of course be able to uh, sell this uh, Lua scripting as part of a construct that you sell on the market uh, etc but this is uh, not yet implemented so this is a quick workaround that allows you already to share things uh, together with the community let me show you one last very important concept uh, with Lua scripting and to do so I'm going to actually plug uh, a container so let's put a container here and I'm going to plug it into uh, this programming board just like anything else uh, so it's going to be uh, in slot number four and the interesting thing I'm going to do here uh, is so this is the container on slot number four and what I'm going to do in the start the unit start I'm going to do a container show so the show uh, uh, function is uh, very important because it will actually display uh, on your screen a particular widget that represents that uh, container. So every, every uh, element is potentially capable of showing itself and to display itself as a, as a widget. So let me just step out and get back in. So you can see that on the right, just below the active programming board uh, message that tells me that this board is uh, running. Uh, you have a little widget that tells you uh, information about this container. So these are random values in this example, but uh, suppose that you are inside the spaceship, this is going to actually show you how much uh, fuel is left into the, this container. And this is how many uh, of the widgets that you've seen uh, when you pilot a ship uh, are actually uh, working. So they are nothing more than just widgets to particular elements that are displayed. And you can control them being visible or not by going into the Lua script and using show or hide on that particular element. So this is a, an important concept and actually everything in your uh, ship is done through Lua programming uh, using some particular function of your control unit which happens to be a cockpit so that it can control the different engines. You could also control every engines individually by plugging all of them uh, inside the programming board or the, the cockpit but you have some high-level functions to allow to do that. So this is a little bit advanced. I'm not going to get into these details uh, in this intro tutorial, but you have basically the, the, the fundamental uh, knowledge now to understand how this is architecture, what are widgets, what are timers, uh, how to handle events, what are all the different things with uh, relative to an element, uh, how to check into the, uh, here into the, the help to get more information, and so that should actually get you going to do amazing and great Lua scripting. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and see you soon in the next tutorial.